I have a question to Jenna, so it's kind of it. Yes. You spoke a lot, no, not a lot, but a few times about male-female relationships and I'm listening. And I feel especially the younger generations maybe more exposed to different ways than just heteronormative realities. So for me it's the same, like I have a gay father, I have a lot of homosexual friends, I know transgender people. and. I'm just wondering how all of this fits into spirituality and because you also explained how communication in a male-female relationship yes. regarding to the soul is working and I guess it's a bit different, so this is kind of my guess. It's not different, see, because the sexual preference does not determine the relationship between a being and their soul. The sexual preference is due to many reasons. It can be an inherited thing, it can be a conceptual decision, it can be a conditioning process, it can be ego, it can be so many things. Whether you're, you know, heterosexual, homosexual or bisexual or asexual or pansexual, that's also there. So we have so many possibilities. None of this actually impacts the, the connection with the soul. The surrender to the soul is a different story from how you express your sexuality. It could be that you ask the soul and you say, is it okay for me to express my sexuality in a heterosexual way? And the soul says, no, then you go with what the soul says. So, essentially these are two separate issues. The more you fall into a state of surrender, the more you go with what the soul is actually impulsing you and we don't know what it's going to impulse. And that's the beauty of it, you know, there's no, there's no given because it's spirituality, it's not religion. Each one gets their impulse and goes with it. The question is, how much in surrender are you? And are you really tuned into the Source? That is where the question mark arises, you know. So it would, it would certainly impact the sexuality as it impacts every action. Is that sexual act arising or that desire arising from the ego or is it arising from the truth? There's no moral code that one can apply to the soul because the soul doesn't care an owl's hoot about what anybody thinks. It doesn't care about what society thinks, least of all actually. It doesn't care about what the government thinks, it doesn't care about what the neighbor thinks, it doesn't care about what the neighbor's cat thinks, it's on its, it's, its own thing, you know. It's the master of the being, it doesn't care about what anyone else says or does or wants or thinks or desires or hopes or anything. So it's a massively free entity that is independent of everything that is in our head. It has no morals, it knows no morals, it knows no master, it knows no adherence to a society or allegiance to a body of thought. It's its own master, the soul, and it's a matter of tuning into the soul and not confusing the impulse of the soul with the push of the ego. So, let's say you, for example, if you're pansexual, pansexual means go with everything, right? So then at least you don't have a pre-choice which is imposed on the soul, I mean. Then you're just there and you ask, you, are, you bend and surrender. Mara is your name, right? I, Mara, am your servant and... Is it okay for me to, to be pansexual? <laughs> you get a yes or you get a no. That's the freedom. I think I was wondering because you said like females and males can't communicate with each other so they have to learn, but that this part kind of falls away if you're in a same-sex relationship, but I don't know if I made the right conclusions. If you're in a same-sex relationship, it's, it's the same as you're in the relationship with your mother or your daughter. If you're a woman, whether you're living with a woman or it's about your mother or your daughter, the sex aspect of it does not enter into that discourse because if you're a female, you will be able to deal easier with a female than... Females and males do not understand each other. It's like they're more scoring through a wall to each other. I mean, they don't understand each other. They're like two species, like an, you know, like a snake and an elephant or something like that. <laughs> so they cannot, they can, one is hissing, the other one is trumpeting, it doesn't work. <laughs> when you are in 
tune with the soul as a female, in a female body, let's say, then at least you're more impulsed on how to deal with that male outside. Whether it's a sexual relationship or not is independent of that, of that particular aspect, you know. Surely, I mean, if it's a same-sex relationship, they'll fight less, but maybe they'll fight more also, for other reasons, you know. But they will understand each other's signals better than if it's a male and a female. Which is also very interesting why in ancient India, pansexuality was actually something common in Indian society. It was never a discussion. People did not declare that they are homosexual or that they are bisexual. Their sexuality was independent of their the procreative relationship, which was which was marriage and having children. So many, many, many gay people, even today, all over this country, they have children. They have they are together with a say gay men are together with a woman. They also have their gay relationships. It's a it's a very flowy thing actually. Now it's becoming more and more rigid because of the imported Victorian laws that had been in place in India since 200 years. The reason why they say that heterosexual relationship is also important is because these two don't understand each other and if they don't understand each other, they also break down each other's egos. So that marriage is actually a framework which makes it easier for society to deal with ego. So that's why it's instituted so, so um, rigidly even in India, even today. You know, you just have to get... People force their family members to get married with somebody, whoever it is, but you have to get married. Because otherwise society is going to have to deal with the egos of all those singles. <laughs> so, <laughs> which, as we know, are quite impressive. So... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>